one of my friends, and I hope he's okay with me calling him a friend, his name is Nathan Tidridge. He, I just found out he recently won the, um, the Governor General's Award for History for Teaching. Has been one of, the, one of the most significant Canadian citizens that I know to build bridges for reconciliation with First Nations. I got to know him most intimately after he, wrote, he raised money for a monument. Uh, part, of the, part of the riding I represent, Madam Speaker, is uh, in Flamborough. Glamborough is a town called Waterdown, and it's, it's growing in leaps and bounds. And, if, and that means that there's lots of development, and traditional uh, lands of First Nations are, are being gobbled up in a development. And he wanted to make sure that there was a marker there for the Sawarsan people. And he raised the money for the monument and, uh, and got permission from the city to lay the monument and had the uh, Lieutenant Governor from Ontario there and myself and some others to make sure that there was, a, there was a, not only a ceremony but a, a solemn oath in the community that, uh, that the Sawarsan natural area be remembered. It's a traditional territory for the neutral Haudenosaunee and Mississauga of Credit First Nations peoples. And um, the more I got to know Nathan Tidridge, the more I admired him. May I just quote something that he wrote in regards to our stewardship of the promises we've made to our Indigenous brothers and sisters. An Indigenous teaching is that for non-Indigenous people, ceremony often bookends the real work of governance, whereas for Indigenous people, it is interwoven into the entire process. In Canada, the Queen and her representatives sit at the apex of our state and are therefore the keepers of our highest protocols of national ceremony. The unique relationships between the Queen's representatives and First Nations provide vehicles for convening community, bringing together diverse stakeholders in a nonpartisan way to focus on particular issues and fostering communication that are not available to politicians tied to a system dominated by a four-year election cycle. Invitations from the Governor General, an office bound to Indigenous people through treaty and infused with centuries of history, are more readily accepted than those from a politician or government. This unique power allows members from different communities and perspectives to gather in a political space that's required to reflect the values inherent in treaty. The power to convene community in no way interferes with the Convention of Responsible Government. However, it can build on the Crown's traditional rights to be consulted, to encourage, and to warn, first articulated in the 19th century British constitutional expert Walter Bagot. The Crown's unique ability to convene community above the political fray is even more important in these polarized, volatile times. It is my hope, uh, Madam Speaker, that not only will this be part of the new oath, but that um, the current government and future governments will consider empowering the office of the Governor General, the Queen's representative here, to really deal with the relational relationship aspect to us and First Nations to bring about, bring about real change and real reconciliation. Thank you.